Have you used your iPhone to take photos at night? It may have looked great on the phone screen, but when you zoomed in, you found the image quality was subpar. Did you think you needed another upgrade? Or your iPhone was broken? Well, you are not alone. Judging from the number of internet articles and forum posts on the subject, it seems that there's a lot of misunderstanding on using the iPhone properly for night shooting. So we're going to address that topic with both theory and practice in today's video. Let's go straight to our topic, tips for getting maximum image quality at night with the iPhone. Number one, lower your ISO. Noise in photography is probably one of the most undesired side effects and one of the most likely factors to give an impression of lower quality in your images. A photograph with noise completely diverts the attention of the viewer, making him focus on the grainy areas instead of other important elements in the image. The issue with noise is the lack of light. This diagram illustrates camera sensor sizes relative to full frame. The current latest iPhone XS has a sensor size of 1 over 2.5 inches and the iPhone 10, which I will be using in my demos, has a 30% smaller size at 1 over 2.6 inches. As you can see, a mobile phone sensor is tiny compared to a typical standalone camera. As the room light drops, the signal from each pixel, based on the light captured, is so low as to be useless without amplification. The problem with that is that as you add amplification, or you boost your ISO setting, it will also add noise. Let's look at a real-world performance in an iPhone X. Here, we take a shot of this typical night scene eating out at night. A good excuse to test out the iPhone camera. Let's zoom in on a portion to properly see the noise. At ISO 50, you can see a grain-free image with clear details. More noise shows up at ISO 100, but it's still okay. At ISO 200, noise grain shows up even more, but still acceptable considering the zoom level. At ISO 500, the image falls apart with too much noise. The detail is also getting lost. At ISO 800, the image is clearly worse and it looks smudged because of the noise reduction applied to the image. ISO 1000 is worse than ISO 800 with more noise reduction applied. In ISO 2000, the image looks like a watercolor painting because of overprocessing. So based on this performance, the first thing you need to do is to keep the ISO really low, around 200 or lower. The lower the better. By the way, you can't use the default iPhone camera which does not allow you to adjust the ISO. You need a camera app that has manual exposure controls. So just to demonstrate, here is adjusting ISO in the Pro Camera app. You have to click the ISO button and then use the slider to make the ISO level really low. But since you lower the ISO level, you also have to adjust the shutter speed to give the proper exposure and just take the shot. Here's adjusting ISO in another app called Halide, which works the same way. So again, you have to tap the ISO button, adjust the slider at the top. Number two, use a tripod. Apple knows that most people shoot photos with their iPhone in their hand. So they've always kept the shutter speed above say one over 15th of a second. If you go slower, you'll start seeing blur due to the natural motion in your arm. At night though, 1 over 15 doesn't get you very far, so the iPhone has to pump up the ISO, and we've just seen the negative results that does. So to get great image quality, you have to lower the ISO and accept the long exposure, but to avoid camera shake, use a tripod. So let's take a look at some pictures taken with low ISOs at night. Notice that the shutter is around the slowest for the iPhone 10 at 1 3rd of a second. Without a tripod, you would risk a blurry shot. Here is another one. At ISO 32, you see that the shutter is set by the camera at 1 over 3 seconds. And here is yet another night shot, ISO 50, and it could go only 1 over 3 seconds. Number 3, shoot in RAW. We've talked about the pros and cons of shooting RAW in a previous video, which I'll provide a link in the description. Just to summarize, capturing in the RAW format has drawbacks on the iPhone. It requires much more data storage than a JPEG file around four times the storage, and that will result in more resources to store, transfer, and edit. However, when the night is low, its main advantage really stands out. As you can see, I'm editing this very underexposed shot. Luckily, it was taken in RAW. So you can use RAW data to modify the image with much greater fidelity than is possible by JPEG or other compressed formats. So as you can see here, I'm adjusting the sliders um, to bring back some exposure to the shot. And you can see how nicely RAW recovers the image. Before, 
and after. So here's another shot which I'm adjusting and this is greatly underexposed and again just to demonstrate I'm going to try to recover this with RAW which contains a lot of data. Um, RAW is able to recover this shot as well even though it's vastly underexposed. Number four, use image stacking to reduce noise. So what if you have to handhold your camera at night and don't have the benefit of a tripod? Image stacking is one alternative. What is image stacking? Image stacking is a technique which relies on taking multiple exposures using the same settings. Software is used to create an image based on the median of all stacked exposures. Image stacking is designed to reduce noise in high ISO situations. The benefit of high ISO is that you can take advantage of a faster shutter speed to avoid camera shake. Because image stacking relies on multiple shots, more image data is available through a process of averaging each pixel that is used to reduce noise. Traditionally, you had to separately import all the photos to Adobe Photoshop to do the stacking. Thankfully, nowadays, some apps does this process automatically within the camera itself. So in this demo of image stacking, we're going to use a software called Low Light Plus and add on to the Pro Camera app. This has to be purchased separately. Let's demonstrate Low Light Plus. So you can see it takes a moment to actually capture the image and there you have it. And so if you zoom into the image, you can see in the single shot, much more noise at this shot is zoomed in at 300%. And you compare it to Low Light Plus, which has the benefit of multiple images and it's a much cleaner image. Let's look at another example. So in this underexposed shot, multiple images are taking a while to take. And it's done. And so we're going to compare now a portion of this. And you can see even at 30% zoom because this was a very dark scene. The ISO was set by the camera at 2000 and you can see it's very noisy even at just 30% zoom. But for low light plus, you can see how much more noise free it is. So thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, do help us out by leaving a like, subscribing, or commenting below. Till the next video.